I'm Philippe, CEO and co-founder of CrowdSec. I wanted to tell you about CrowdSec state and where we're heading, what is our business model, and a lot of things you may want to know about us. So CrowdSec is probably today the largest CTI network on earth based on behavior. We detect behavior in logs of hundreds of thousands of machines across the world. And it's probably the only one doing behavioral approach. There's a lot of systems dealing with binaries analysis or honeypots that are detecting you know, the background noise of the internet. Uh, but those honeypots, they're not getting realistic traffic. Nobody is gonna DDoS a honeypot system or you don't send the same payload uh, toward a machine that is probably a, a dummy and not a real one. So people going after you probably have a different behavior. That's why this behavioral network is unique. It's a one of a kind. And um, why did we create this software? It's because we want to change the way people think about cybersecurity. For the last 40 years, people thought, okay, we will use the superhero approach. We'll be alone against an army, but we will be super equipped. Laser eyes, you know, magic uh, buckler and bracelet and, and car and jetpacks and whatever. The thing is, when you fight alone against an army, you lose, period, no matter how well you're equipped. The CrowdSec approach is pretty different though. We think that if you have to defeat an army, you need a bigger army, period. This strategy proved efficient over the last thousands of years. And here's how it works. We need an open source software. You can call it an IPS, an IDS, a cloud workload protection, whatever. I mean, this is messy lately uh, regarding the, the categorization. What we do is we read behavior in logs. We have threat analysis. And what we see is uh, who is addressing who with what IP address. And users automatically generate this IP address map in real time so that we can ban them in a block list. And the way we monetize the system is we provide extra services and we also monetize the IP addresses and block list to the people that are not partaking into the network or that need a more intensive usage of this. We are ways of cybersecurity if you want a kind of global collaborative firewall. Um, how does it work? Well, it's pretty easy. We acquire logs. Those logs can be local, like syslog, the journal, the defender, whatever. They can be concentrated in a CM or in a Splunk or Yelki or Kafka, or they can be cloud-born, like CloudTrail, Defender, whatever, you know. So all those logs we can read and we are supposed to find a lot of things in there. So we have an agent which runs in Windows, Linux, and BSD environments. And this agent is written in Golang. It's super efficient at protecting uh, machines with very sparse resources, for example, containers or IoT devices, but also larger machines. Um, so this agent is looking into your logs, right? It's not one agent per machine, it's one where your logs are. You can have one per machine or you can have one reading from your log pit as, as you want. And this agent will look for bad behaviors. We will describe more uh, down the line what is a bad behavior. And then we remediate. The remediation phase is based on the behavior we detected and it can be blocked, for example, in your Palo Alto, your Fortinet, your Firewall One, or in your traffic, uh, in your HA proxy, in your WordPress directly, in your uh, Magento very soon, in Drupal, in, at any level you want, actually. And you can remediate in any way you want. You don't have to block it or drop the connection. You can also send a capture or you can only trigger some remediation in some context. So if you can use MFA or alert yourself or pass information to a SOC or a SecOps desk, you know, it's however you want. And then once you detected someone with a bad behavior or rather an IP address with a bad behavior, we are interested. CrowdSec, get this IP address, the timestamp, the IP address and the behavior. And this is the only thing we need to curate those signals and send them back to uh, the IPS under the form of a block list. If enough people are reporting the same IP address as being dangerous, we'll integrate it to the block list automatically and your firewall or whatever you're using will be updated in real time. And if the IP address is released, because for example, it's a VPN by the cyber criminal, then it's removed quickly. And if the cyber criminal is using a new VPN address, it will be added to the uh, block list very quickly as well. The goal is to be absolutely real time and contain no false positive. That's why also we create uh, everything like false positive and poisoning with an advanced algorithm. Um, this process is obviously fully automated. Uh, we can detect any kind of behavior. As long as it is in the logs, we can find it. 
uh, and you can write yourself a parser for it. It's pretty easy, it's written in YAML, nothing really complicated. You can look for web scan, port scans, layer seven DDoS, we have a lot of use cases around those. Uh, credential brute force, VPN brute force, credit card stuffing, like if someone is trying credit card numbers to verify if they are uh, valid by doing $0.1 transaction. Well, this leaf trace in the log, both scalping, you know, the action of buying automatically on a retail website and reselling this, which is potentially in shortage on eBay, for example, for a profit. Or ransomware letter remove, you know, scanning for remote desktop, Samba, shares, and so on. Um, credential stuffing, catalog scrapping, you name it. There are so many use cases. We already detect more than 50 different behaviors and counting. So the CrowdSec platform, as we call it, is comprised of one IDS, the agent that detects in the logs, one IPS, the component that will block, it could be your existing system that we will just inject the block list into, either coming from the IDS source or from the global network. The console, which is a place where you will find all the dashboards and the way to interact with your agents. If you want to block something, whitelist something, add extra block list. And the CTI. The CTI is a, um, an API-driven system where you just send an IP address and we'll tell you everything we know about it. And we know about a bit less than 20 million different IP addresses. So there is data. Um, we don't collect uh, your logs. They stay local. We don't do anything with them. We just extract the timestamp, the IP address that was offending, and the behavior, which makes us compatible with the GDPR uh, framework. It's free because our goal is for everyone to be protected as best as possible. Uh, and they all partake into the network. So the more the merrier, the stronger we are. And that's why also it's, it's free and open source because we want you to be able to adapt it to your own context. It's audited and transparent. It's open to contribution. We give you a software, you give us signals and we reinforce everyone protection. And this is exactly what we're building. We're building a real time map of cyber criminal activities and more precisely about cyber criminal IP address pools. The IP address they are using, that's why it, that's why it needs to be real time. We don't want to you know, keep outdated information in this block list and we want to do as soon as we can when a new address is used. And we hurt the cyber criminal directly uh, on their scarce resource because IP address are in limited numbers actually. You can have an infinity of domain names, you know, domain name one, two, three, four, and so on. There's an infinity of different hashes for a specific binary. You just have to change one byte and the hash is different. There is just a limited number of IP address. Some would say that IPv6 is a large number, but it's still a finite number. And IPv6 is attributed by large chunks. So when we ban, we ban large chunks. So it doesn't really solve the problem for the cyber criminals. Anyway, they prefer IPv4 so far, we can tell. Um, so we are aiming at these IP addresses they are using because every time they do this and they lose IP addresses and they are burned, they have to change their uh, operations and it costs time and it slows down uh, their operations. Um, another thing you need to know is CrowdSec is vertically accurate, meaning since it's not honeypots, they are real machines uh, run by real people for real businesses that are running in finance, manufacturing, tech, health, retail, and whatever else. So maybe some IP addresses are specifically going after media, for example, and we'll know about it. And we'll send you uh, this IP addresses specifically targeting media because you're a media, for example. So this helps us having a vertical accuracy that is pretty unique. Um, due to the fact that we protect real workload and not honeypots. We have a console. You can interact with your agents, seeing what they see, how you've been aggressed, by whom, when, and so on. And uh, it allows you also see, to do CTI, obviously, but it also allows you to interact with your agents, like whitelisting, blocklisting, you know, reinforcing a decision or propagating it to other machines of yours. Um, we offer a 7D CTI, which is one of the most precise in the world with the most uh, different fields, and it's extremely real-time given the size of the network. And we are not here to compete with anyone, actually. We play nice with firewalls, with EPP, EDR, XDR, CM, CTI, AI, SOAR, log storage, or whatever. You just inject the decision and the smartness of CrowdSec wherever you want, and you leverage it however you want. And, you know, uh, it seems the DOD and other large avenues used CrowdSec to defend against Log4G at the time, but it's just yet another. We have so many countries, government, people, banks, universities, you name it, using CrowdSec. It's growing by the day by 0.5 to 1%. 
So the network is growing and why it's growing is getting even stronger. I'm happy to have presented you CrowdSec. I hope you like it and I hope you install it and try it. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us on this course or Discord or directly through our website. Have a good day.